Hello Alabama. Before the news hits, sign up and keep getting more Bama news. Nick Saban retired, the change happened, okay, now what? With the arrival of Kalen DeBoer, the Crimson Tide enters a new chapter, where expectations are as high as the Tuscaloosa skies. DeBoer, who arrives with an impressive 89.7% win rate, has already demonstrated his ability to transform programs. In his two seasons with the Washington Huskies, he quickly transformed a 4-8 team into Pac-12 champions with a 25-3 record. That ability to quickly turn around a losing situation is exactly what Alabama needs in a time of transition. Yet even with his impressive resume, DeBoer finds himself facing a mountain few would dare climb, following in Nick Saban's footsteps. And of course, ESPN's Paul Feinbaum had one more opinion. What did he say? Did you see it? He believes DeBoer has the talent to lead Alabama, but points out that matching Saban's career is an almost impossible expectation to meet. I think he will, Feinbaum said, referring to DeBoer's ability to fill the void left by Saban. I think he's a great coach. In many ways, one of the best coaches in the country. But that's what we're talking about here. Nick Saban was a magician. He won games he shouldn't have. He did things no one has ever done before. Those words capture the reality of the challenge DeBoer faces. While it's incredible that he has the skills to lead a powerhouse like Alabama, the question remains whether he can not only sustain that success, but also come close to the greatness established by Saban. After all, Saban wasn't just a talented coach, he was an unparalleled strategist, a leader who inspired his players to push themselves beyond their limits, to believe in the impossible. He turned Alabama into a winning machine where defeat was a rarity. However, Kalen DeBoer is no ordinary coach. He is not just a passing name. He has proven that he can transform programs and take teams to new heights. His work in Washington speaks for itself and his adaptability and strategy on the field are nationally recognized. He may not be Nick Saban, but perhaps that is not necessary. Perhaps Alabama is ready for a new identity, a new era where DeBoer can shape his own legacy. DeBoer's success at Alabama will depend not only on his coaching ability, but also on his ability to manage the constant pressure of leading one of the most iconic programs in college football. Crimson Tide fans are accustomed to winning and anything less than excellence will be viewed with suspicion. DeBoer will have to earn the trust of the fan base, the players and the administration not just by winning, but by continuing the culture of success that Saban established. It's important to remember that no coach can be judged solely by his first few seasons. Kalen DeBoer's story at Alabama is yet to be written. If he can bring the same winning mentality he demonstrated at Washington, if he can inspire his players to greatness, then he will have taken the first step toward creating his own place in college football history. And what will the fans think? If he wins often, they will think it's great. And speaking of Nick Saban, he has always been a master at motivating his teams, using approaches that, to many, may seem unconventional. Recently, the former Alabama Crimson Tide coach, now in his new phase as a commentator, revealed one of his most intriguing strategies for keeping his players focused and determined, reverse rat poison. During an appearance on Pat McAfee's show, Saban explained his decision not to pick Alabama to win the SEC championship in 2024. Instead, he named Georgia and Texas as the favorites, a choice that, at first glance, may seem surprising given the history of success he built in Tuscaloosa. However, for those who know Saban, the decision makes perfect sense. I think it's kind of like reverse rat poison, Saban said. I've always hated it and I'll continue to hate it about our program. I could also say from the beginning we're on any show or game day, having to predict and make hypothetical decisions about who's going to win a game, who's going to win a championship, who's going to win what conference. I've always hated that. So I picked Georgia and Texas because it's a reverse rat poison for Alabama. It's a motivating factor for them not to be picked because I hated being picked first or second, 
because you don't know how it's going to affect your team psychologically. These kids are so influenced by what they read, hear, and see. So I didn't want to say anything too good. This reverse rat poison is a brilliant tactic by Saban. By picking other teams as favorites, he's essentially challenging his former players and the new Alabama coaching staff to prove them wrong. Saban has always understood that the pressure of being the favorite can take its toll on players, especially in an era where social media and the media can amplify expectations and opinions. By diverting that pressure and redirecting it to other teams, he creates an environment where his players can focus on playing football and surprising those who doubt them. For the Alabama Crimson Tide, that message is clear. Their former coach, who knows the program better than anyone, believes they have more to prove. And there's nothing more motivating for an athlete than the idea that they're being underestimated. Saban's strategy isn't just about what he says, but about the psychological impact it can have on a team that's always been accustomed to being the favorite. So how will Kalen DeBoer handle that? The challenge is not only to maintain the success Saban established, but also to get his players to buy into the idea that they still have a lot to prove, even as the outside world continues to expect the Crimson Tide to excel. Saban knows that the true test of a team isn't just winning when everyone expects it, but winning when everyone doubts it. This against all odds mentality is something Saban cultivated during his years in charge and something DeBoer will need to continue to nurture. Alabama is not just a college football team, it is an institution where winning is part of its identity. And with Saban's reverse rat poison approach, that identity is only strengthened, challenging players to be more than they believe they can be. I believe DeBoer can deliver some big wins. Recruiting is very interesting and some great players are coming in. Let's hope Coach Saban is wrong this time and Bama will be the champion. Now it's Chris Stewart's turn. He has taken over as the new voice of Alabama football, a role that carries decades of tradition and responsibility. For Stewart, an experienced broadcaster from Fairfield, this opportunity is the culmination of a childhood dream, something he can hardly believe. Five-year-old Chris Stewart's head explodes when I hear that, he confessed while reflecting on the magnitude of his new role. Realizing that I actually have this role, this responsibility, and this honor now is just hard not to smile when I think about it. Stewart's journey to this point isn't just a story of aspirations but also one of personal and professional overcoming. He follows in the footsteps of legends like Eli Gold, Paul Kennedy, and John Forney, names that have shaped the narrative of the Crimson Tide over the years. When I hear voice of the Crimson Tide, my mind goes to John Forney, to hear, to listen to and broadcast those games when, frankly, there weren't many games on television, said Stewart, highlighting the weight of the legacy he now carries. But Stewart is no rookie when it comes to the Crimson Tide Sports Network. He has been a constant presence, narrating Alabama baseball games for 24 years and serving as the play-by-play -play announcer for Alabama basketball for 22 years. During the 2022 football season, he had already temporarily filled the vacancy left by Eli Gold, which gave him the opportunity to become even more familiar with the dynamics of one of the most coveted positions in sports radio. So while my role in this booth is new, my presence in this booth as part of the team goes back several years. And so I am grateful for that relationship, said Stewart, reflecting on his long association with the team. Although this is his first season as the official voice of the Crimson Tide, Stewart has already managed to create a legacy of his own. One of his most memorable phrases, let's get out of here, emerged during the thrilling victory over Texas A&M, a phrase that resonated with fans and became a symbol of his connection with the audience. It was the emotion of the moment. And it seemed to resonate with so many people that I basically said it jokingly, recalled Stewart. The phrase had such an impact that, the following year, during another game against Texas A&M, he repeated it, prompting his boss to order t-shirts with the catchphrase. For Stewart, the role he now plays is more than just a prestigious position, it is the fulfillment of a dream that almost didn't come true. In 2018, he suffered a stroke in his sleep, followed by complications that nearly cost him his life. It was months of recovery, and as he himself reported, it was about five years ago, 
right around this time, that I had coronary bypass surgery and then the infection and the illness that set me back for 91 days. And it really almost took my life. This experience transformed his perspective on life and the work he now performs. It makes me appreciate even more what I am able to do. And I think in a way, it also relieves the pressure, because instead of it being the end all, I know that each day is a gift, said Stewart. He attributes part of this miraculous recovery to the prayers of Alabama fans, who constantly remind him of the support he received during his recovery. However, he is aware that taking the microphone as the new voice of Alabama football comes with unique challenges. I know not everyone is happy with this. I understand that it's natural. I just hope they understand that, regardless of how they feel about the presenter himself, they know I care as much as they do, commented Stewart, recognizing that earning the acceptance of such a passionate fan base will be a gradual process. Stewart has an undeniable advantage. He is not just a dedicated professional, but also a devout Alabama fan. I was an Alabama fan long before I was an Alabama announcer, he admitted, making it clear that his love for the team is genuine and deep. I'm trying to say this honestly, professionally. But yes, my heart bleeds crimson. And when we lose, it hurts. When we win, it's time to celebrate. Let's move forward and see a new voice at Bama. This controversy is quite bizarre, and I believe most people did not agree with it. Miami, Ohio, coach Chuck Martin and the Alabama Crimson Tide have drawn attention in the college football scene. Martin accused Alabama of illegally recruiting his star kicker, Graham Nicholson, a claim promptly denied by Alabama's coach, Kalen DeBoer. The accusation surfaced after Martin was questioned in a video for the school's website about the loss of Nicholson through the transfer portal. Nicholson, who won the coveted Lou Groza Award last season as the best kicker in the country, is now in Tuscaloosa, replacing Will Reichard, who was drafted by the Minnesota Vikings in the sixth round of the NFL draft. We didn't lose him, said Martin, clearly upset. He's at Alabama. We know exactly where he is. You media folks, it's all pretense. Like, no, Alabama stole our kicker. They illegally recruited our kicker and stole him from us. This accusation was not a mere remark but a forceful statement suggesting irregular practices by the Alabama program. Martin continued to express his dissatisfaction with the situation, stating that player theft is a common and well-known practice but often ignored. It's a fact. But we act like it's not. We live in this la-la world, like, hey, let's not talk, about reality. I don't know why. Everyone knows what's going on. Alabama stole our kicker. Some other schools tried to steal him too. However, Kalen DeBoer was quick to refute these claims, emphasizing that Alabama followed all appropriate procedures during the recruitment of Nicholson. He entered the portal, and we approached him, said DeBoer, defending the program's integrity. That's how it works, right? So we did everything the way you're supposed to do it. The transfer portal has become an essential tool in college football, allowing players to explore new opportunities at different programs. However, the transparency and ethics involved in this process are often questioned, as demonstrated by this situation. DeBoer made it clear that, in Nicholson's case, Alabama acted within the established norms, seeking the player only after his entry into the portal. Graham Nicholson arrives at Alabama with an impressive resume. Last season for the Redhawks, he made 27 of 28 field goals and converted 35 of 36 extra point attempts, establishing himself as one of the most accurate kickers in the country. His addition to the Crimson Tide fills a significant gap left by Will Reichard, who departed Alabama as the highest scorer in FBS history, with 547 points. For Alabama, Martin's allegations are seen as an attempt to create controversy where there is none. DeBoer, determined to keep the focus on the field, highlighted that the program will continue to act professionally and ethically, regardless of external criticism. This happens in all programs, as we've previously mentioned, 
So the game goes on. Deshaun Jones has been making waves. The new cornerbacks coach, Maurice Linguist, faced the challenge of replenishing this unit with experience and stability. In this context, Jones, a veteran transfer from Wake Forest, became a valuable addition to the Crimson Tide. Linguist, who recently took on the role of cornerbacks coach at Alabama, used a baseball analogy to describe the team's approach to the transfer portal. Each player Alabama pursued was like a batter, and the hope was to make contact. During a tumultuous offseason, in which Alabama lost 41 players from last year's roster, the team had to swing a lot to rebuild its squad. Among the various transfers that arrived, Jones quickly stood out. We feel like we made contact, linguist commented on Jones's arrival. I love Deshaun. We're pleased with what he's doing for us. For a team that lost almost all its experience at the cornerback position, Jones brought exactly what Alabama needed, proven field experience. Jones, from Baltimore, played 20 games over two seasons at Wake Forest, where he recorded 60 total tackles, three interceptions, and five pass deflections. With 865 snaps played over his career, he quickly became Alabama's most experienced cornerback, a crucial factor in a group that in spring consisted mainly of talented but inexperienced freshmen. Kalen DeBoer, Alabama's new head coach, highlighted the importance of Jones to the team during the fall camp. We need him out there, DeBoer said. There's a confidence in him that we need in our program, but also in that position room. This confidence is based not only on Jones's physical ability but on his veteran presence and the stability he offers in a transitioning unit. During the fall camp, Jones worked with quiet conviction. He is not a player of big words but of big actions. His story is marked by perseverance and determination. A three-star recruit from a talent-rich area, Jones had few power four offers but chose Wake Forest, where he slowly built his career. Now, in his fourth college season, he brings that experience and resilience to Alabama, where his impact is already being felt. Linguist praised Jones's steady and consistent approach, a quality that has served as a model for the younger players in the cornerback's room. He's an older guy who's been in big games and has a steady way about him, Linguist said. Steady is the best way to describe him. He has a stable personality, but when he steps on the grass, I think his game really elevates. This stability not only reinforced the unit but also provided the freshmen with an example to follow, showing them the value of persistence and precise execution. Adding a few pounds of muscle during the offseason also helped strengthen his game. He's doing a great job, said defensive coordinator Kane Womack. He's made tremendous progress changing his body composition. He's playing very fast now. In the end, what DeBoer, Linguist, and Womack hope is that Jones's experience will translate into on-field leadership, especially when the season starts and Alabama faces the challenges of SEC football. As Womack put it, time will tell if these guys who haven't played in the SEC can handle these things, but I think he's taking steps in the right direction. He's playing with confidence. I believe in this talent. Now I want to see your opinion. Your comment is very welcome.